Let's take a look at biotic interactions. In this example, we have parasitism, which is an interaction when one species benefits and the other is harmed. Here we have fleas that are sucking nutrients from the dog. So parasites suck nutrients from hosts. Here the fleas are the parasites and they are benefited by the nutrients. However, the dog is the host and therefore the dog is harmed. In parasitism, the host's fitness is often decreased, but the parasites don't actually kill their host. Unlike parasitism, in which a parasite doesn't actually kill the host, predation involves a predator killing and eating its prey. Here we have a lion and a zebra. The predator is the lion, and it is going to eat its prey which is the zebra. A couple things to keep in mind about predation is that the predator and the prey are constantly evolving adaptations and defenses alongside each other. So the predators are getting better at capturing the prey and the prey are getting better at escaping. Also note that if predators eat a lot of their prey, then the predator can decrease competitive exclusion because they're decreasing the prey's competition with a different competitor. On the top right, I've added a graph to show you the behavior between a predator and a prey when graphed. Notice how when the prey population increases, the predator population increases. But as the predator population increases, the prey population decreases. This long-term behavior is called oscillations. Now one example of predation is herbivory. So this is also a plus-minus interaction. And here we can see that an animal eats plants. For example, on the left we have a deer eating a tree and on the right we have a caterpillar eating a leaf. So the animal is benefited and the animal is the predator while the plants are harmed and the plants are the prey. Now let's look at another symbiotic interaction. Here we have mutualism. If you look closely at the photo, you'll notice that there's actually this creature on the rock. And it has camouflaged so well that it's very hard to see. This creature is called a spider crab. And on top of the spider crab, there's green algae. So in this example of mutualism, we are talking about a spider crab and green algae. In mutualism, both species benefit. But remember that the benefit outweighs the cost. So it's not like there aren't any costs to the interaction. There are, but the benefits of being together outweigh any costs. Therefore, natural selection selects for such interactions in the next generation. Another key idea is that in mutualism, both species can evolve adaptations, which can lead to co-evolution. And this is when any change in one species will affect the other because they're dependent on each other. Now there are two types of mutualism. There is obligate mutualism and there is facultative mutualism. Let's talk about the differences. On the left, we have the example of obligate mutualism between ants and aphids. If you look closely at the picture, you'll notice these moist areas on the leaf. 
and we'll talk about those in a second. In this interaction, the ants protect the aphids from any predators. At the same time, the aphids provide food for the ants in the form of sap, which is these moist areas on the leaf. The key idea here is that one or both species cannot survive without the other. So they are so tightly dependent that they need each other in order to survive. Now let's take a look at the example on the right of facultative mutualism between clownfish and sea anemones. The clownfish have a safe and protective home in the sea anemone. And one fun fact is that these sea anemones actually have nematocysts, which are stingers, and these tentacles are normally used to capture prey. But the clownfish have developed an adaptation to not be stung by the nematocysts. Also, the anemones are benefited because the clownfish clean the anemone and provide nutrients in the form of different wastes. In this kind of mutualism, one or both species can survive without the other. So they are benefited by the interaction, but they are less dependent on it. Now let's take a look at commensalism. In this example, we have the cattle egrets and the cow. So if you look closely at the photos, you'll notice these birds, which are cattle egrets, and then the actual cows. The cattle egrets get to eat fleas and other bugs on the cattle, and they also get free transportation, so they get to travel wherever the cows go. On the other hand, the cow is unaffected. It is neither helped nor harmed. Therefore, this interaction is a plus and zero because one species benefits while the other is neither helped nor harmed. And finally, we have competition, which is a minus minus interaction in which both species are harmed. But there are two kinds of competition. There's interspecific, which is between two different species. And there's intraspecific, which is between individuals of the same species. In both cases, fitness of both species or individuals that are participating is reduced because both sides are using energy in order to fight for a certain resource when they could instead be reproducing. One way that I like to remember these two kinds of competition is that inter means different or between, whereas intra is normally within. And in this example, we were talking about lions versus cheetahs. I hope this video helped you understand about biotic interactions and the different ways in which species interact with each other. If it did, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you.